This video will show you how to navigate the Hobo Mobile app when you're using the MX2001. We're configuring it for a specific application in a monitoring well where we're going to be monitoring drawdown from a pump. So to configure our logger for this deployment, we're going to tap on the Hobo Mobile app on our device and it will scan for the available devices that are in range and we can see we have an MX2001. This is our MX2001 available. And so we're going to tap on that to connect to it and configure the logger for our deployment. So we can see its current status is stopped. It gives us what the temperature is. Um, again, the serial number, the, the uh, Bluetooth signal strength and we're going to click on configure to configure the logger so we're going to give it a name uh, to give it a name we just tap on the name field and the name we need to give this is our 107885721 and you can name this anything you'd like this is going to be our file name when we read out the data and this is the name that our engineer wants us to give this deployment below that we could group this if there was if there was multiple loggers in the same area we could give it a name somebody had a name in here called awesome which was pretty interesting but we um, again this is just a, a single deployment so we're not going to put in a group name uh, our location uh, again this is it's getting us getting this location information from our device uh, again we can it'll show you where that is if you're enabled for that below that is where we're going to put in the reference water level and again typically you want to do this when it is in the water so we measured the water level again we're going to, we're referencing this to the top of the well cap so it was minus 48 point seven six zero feet and again it's in feet you can do it in meters whatever you'd like we're also going to select what water density we want to use uh, for this deployment we want fresh water adjusted for temperature that gives us our best uh, accuracy but we could certainly just put in a um, a fresh water value uh, you can select salt water or brackish water or you can manually put that in if you have a uh, a density meter so if you take a density reading you can put that in manually okay we'll tap on done now we have our reference water level in there uh, the logger counts how many times it's been deployed there's no limit to that number below that under logging setup this is where we want to set our logging interval so again I want to change that interval I want to set it to a five minute interval for this application. Again, that will um, vary from applications to application depending on where you're deploying. And we're done with that. So we have basically we have 123.5 days worth of data um, before the logger takes its stop or its, its um, action its full memory action and we're going to talk about that in a minute uh, under stop logging so uh, if we click on uh, start logging it, it asks us how we want to start the logger logging so we can start it now immediately you can start it at the next logging interval which is uh, the next five minute increment on your clock or you can have it start on date and time which is a uh, what we used to call a, um, a delayed start so if you, if you tap on that, it will allow you to program in a future time and date so that it can start automatically um, at that time. This is a good feature to use if you have multiple loggers that you want to all, you, you want to synchronize them to the same start time. Uh, using delayed start is a good way to do that. So we're done with that. And below that, we see stop logging. This is where we can tell the logger what to do when uh, the memory fills up in that 123.5 days. So we can tell it to stop, 
So it says stop logging when memory fills, or we can click on uh, never, which means it will uh, wrap, or what we call, uh, some people call it circular logging or first in, first out logging. But basically what will happen is when the memory fills in 123.5 days, it will begin to overwrite the old data with new data. So all the old data will be lost eventually. So it depends on your application. Some people only are interested in getting the latest data, so they don't care. They'll leave it on wrap. Um, it really depends on um, how you want to uh, manage your, your data files and, and the data that you're interested in. You can also configure it to stop at a specific time and date or after a specific time period has passed. Uh, below that so if you're only interested in two weeks worth of data you can have it stop after two weeks if you wish click on done below that is where we can uh, enable sensors to log um, so we can uh, we want to get differential pressure uh, the, the differential pressure is the difference between the, the barometric and the uh, in situ or in the water measurement Typically, you'd want to leave all of these on. Uh, if you turn temperature off, watch what happens to your, again, you have a, if you disable temperature, it says uh, you're not going to be able to compensate, uh, you're not going to be able to use that freshwater density. So, um, and it, so it turns off the other measurement, too, because it's not valid. So, again, you have to, uh, I, I would suggest leaving them all on for your application, for your uh, and again, we then we have uh, we can select what logging mode we wish. Logging mode is uh, either it's fixed interval burst or um, what we call statistical logging. So burst logging is event triggered. Um, it's basically an event triggered change of logging interval. So with normal, with a five minute interval, the logger is going to be waking up every five minutes, taking a measurement back to low power state. If you select burst logging, you can set limits either for water level, and again, that's calculated water level. It uses the differential pressure to give you that, or temperature. And again, it, basically what we can say is we can say, okay, if it goes above a specific pressure, I want it to start logging faster. Now, same with temperature. If it goes above a, sp a specific temperature, I want it to log faster. So this is a good feature if you're interested in capturing events to a finer resolution. For this application, we're just going to leave it at a fixed five-minute interval. The other, um, the other logging mode. Uh, hang on. The other logging mode is statistical logging. And basically, what that does is it is, for example, if here, if we if we uncheck normal, and we log at a five-minute interval, and then we say I want the I select average statistics, and set a uh, let's say a one-minute sampling interval. What that means is that each five-minute measurement is going to be based on the average of five one-minute samples. So for this application, we're just going to use normal logging. We're not going to do statistical logging. So we just want that five-minute. Um, snapshot of data, if you will. We also give you the ability to set up alarms. Again, these are just locally uh, recorded. There's no notification of alarm, of exceedance of alarms, or anything like that. It's just strictly uh, um, indicated in the data file when you read it out. Keep in mind that if you're going to use burst logging, burst logging and alarms are mutually exclusive. You can either do alarms or burst. You can't do both at the same time. And now we're ready to put the logger in the water and press start to start it logging. We want to make sure that it is in the water before we press start because it uses that first reading as its calibration offset. So let's get it in the water and we will get it logging. Okay. So now we can, if we click up here in the upper right hand corner, if we tap on start, It'll say configuring logger, and it will begin logging. And now it has been configured successfully. And you'll notice up in the left-hand corner now, it's configured and logging, and we are ready to begin our deployment.